This is the new Kia Sportage, and it's a little bit like a Hyundai Tucson. It's because they share many of their same parts because Hyundai owns Kia. Sorry, that's the laziest analogy I've ever done, <laughs> but it's true. Now I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this vehicle. So I'm going to talk you around the exterior design, the interior. I'm going to try out some of its technology, tell you about its new electrified engines. And of course, I'm going to take it for a drive. Plus I'm going to launch it. See how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Before we go any further, let's talk about the price. So the Kia Sportage starts from just under £27,000. If you want to see the very latest savings through CarWow, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to check out our Sportage offers. Also, if you're thinking about buying a new Sportage or any car for that matter, you're probably going to have to sell your current car and you can now also do that through CarWow as well. You just upload some photos, give a brief description and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a good price for it. And then they'll come to your house, take your car away and put them in your account. It's simple. Now, if you want to do that at a later date, just simply Google Wow Me Car Wow and we'll wow you. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new Sportage. So from the rear, I really like it. The design of this panel here is like that on the EV6. It's sort of like a ducktail spoiler. Cool. Then there's another spoiler up here and some glossy silvery trim. Thankfully, there's no fakery, apart from maybe this diffuser. Exhaust pipe wise, there is one under here, hidden away. The shame of using fossil fuels. Mm. Moving down the side, wheel sizes start at 17 inches, which probably will be too small. These are the 18s, though you can actually get 19s. I like this bit, the way there's this like line here, then this line here. One of our members of the team doesn't like that, but I disagree. It looks quite cool. And I quite like this car from the side. It looks neat. This is the GT Line S. It's the top of the range and it has the black roof bars rather than the standard silver ones. Moving to the front. This is the bit I'm not so keen on. It's these big lights. It's just look a bit odd. It's not ugly like its sister car, the Hyundai Tucson, but it's still I don't know, a little bit awkward feeling. Anyhow, this GT line gets some um, extra black trim here just to make it look a bit more sporty. I don't know, maybe the look will grow on me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you like the look of this or not? Here on the inside, the Sportage is a nice place to be. I like the design. There's some interesting detailing, different materials, squidgy dash. I like the fact you've got stitching in it. It seems premium. The quality overall is nice in here. Only when you go a bit low down do things get a bit scratchy but I can't fault the solidity. Look at this, centre console wobble test. Yeah, that doesn't budge at all. I quite like this gloss trim here, though it might scratch easily, but I'm not going to complain about this. Look, there's no silly like gear selector, like an old gear knob. Who needs an old knob? Seat position is good as well, and there's plenty of adjustment in it, of course. When that, let me look at that steering wheel up and down, lots of movement in that. Steering wheel feels nice, though. One of the problems with Kias, I don't know why they do it, but their centre boss, which you do look at and sometimes touch, they always feel cheap in Kias for some reason. What's the matter with you? Shame, because all the actual controls are nicely damped and feel expensive. And I especially like this bit, look. So you've got controls for the climate here, but if you press this button, you can toggle to the actual shortcuts for the infotainment system. Look, so there, climate, quick temperature change. There we go. Oh, toggle. And then we've got like map, nav, and all that kind of thing for the infotainment. Speaking of which, as standard, you get an eight inch screen here, four inch screen there. But as you move up the range, this screen gets bigger and then this one eventually does. And from halfway up the range, you get this full size screen, which is lovely. It's slightly curved. So the main infotainment system, there's lots of functions. It's relatively easy to navigate and it comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard, which is what you're going to use. The digital driver's display, you can control it using the buttons on the steering wheel. Thankfully, they're not touch sensitive buttons like in Volkswagen vehicles and really annoying. They're actually old school push in buttons and are easy to use. So you can quite easily just whip through the different functions here on the display. I like that. I also like the fact that there's decent practicality. So the door bins, look, I've got my flask here, which is essential on a cold day like today. It does fit in the door bin. It's a bit snug, but you can get it in there. The glove box is an average size, but the storage here is better. Underneath there, we've got a storage tray. Now you can put your mobile phone in there. That's where the wireless charging is, if it's fitted to the car. But also look, we've got 12 volt socket there. Got a normal USB and a USB-C for all the kids. Then underneath here, look, it's decent size. It's room for a coffee cup, and you can put two coffee cups there. And look, press this, holds them tight. The only slight problem with that there is that you might end up struggling to grip it and end up pulling the top off like and then it spills in your, in your lap. But no worries, you can actually put the smaller coffee cups in that one there and then you can actually grip it at the sides. 
So it's important that people don't think about it until they've got coffee all over their trousers. And then they're like, oh God, why didn't they build this car better? But it's not a problem here. Hmm. Anyway, let's move into the back. Here in the back seats, the Sportage is sufficiently roomy. So this seat is in my ideal driving position and I've got enough knee room. Headroom's good as well. People over six foot will be fine. One slight issue is the foot space. So the runners for this seat in front do eat into the foot well, so you can't really move your feet about that much. Though there is enough space to just slide them forward underneath the chair in front. Speaking of which, this seat base is really quite deep, so you get lots of under thigh support. One thing to note though, is there is a bit of a hump in the floor there. So if you need to carry three people in the back at once, while this seat base is quite wide, there is competition for foot space. Also, this car isn't the widest, so three adults across the back will feel a little bit squeezed in. Now, if you need to carry a baby seat, obviously you've got eyes to fix angle points here, but there's no flip off cover, so you have to jab the seat in between the seat squab and the backrest like that to try and find the actual locating points for the eyes to fix. Hmm. Can't fault this though, look, you do have backrests that you can recline to your ideal position so long as your ideal position isn't any more reclined than this, but it shouldn't be because it is rather laid back. You've also got an armrest, a couple of there, bit of a shame you don't have a cover for them, so you end up putting your wrist in the actual hole like that. Still, if you need to carry longer items and people in the back at the same time, look, you can fold down this middle seat like that, and there's some through loading there. Quite a lot of space, actually. Another thing I want to point out to you is this, look, as well as pockets in the seat back, so you get these little hooks there, and USB-Cs. Speaking of practicality, look, there's some rear door bins there like that. Like that see? You fit the flask in there. And look, panoramic glass roof. Standard from the MIG spec upwards. It's nice. So too is the fact that look, the rear windows, they go all the way down. There's one thing that does concern me though, and that's this sort of like handle in the headrests. I can just imagine children going, Dad, you're going too quickly, slow down. Does that annoy you, Dad? Does it? Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Let's check out the Sportage's boot. So the capacity is 591 litres, which is huge. The only car in this category that really beats it is its sister car, the Hyundai Tucson. Look at that. Uh, oh no, look, there's a bit of a load lift to lift things over, but don't worry, you've got a slightly adjustable force floor lock. You can lift that up like, oh, there we go, and then it's gone. Something else I want to show you as well. Look, we've got this retractable load cover, and if I can just remove it, what is the way to do it? There we go. <laughs> I can whack it underneath there. Look, 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 look. Fold this back down. Now it's hidden. Good. What's also good is this, look, 12 volt socket there. Tie down point there. And my favourite thing of all, handles to release the rear seat so you can fold them down like that. So it's annoying. You can't get a spare wheel with this car, not at all. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Kia Sportage. As with many electrified Kias, the brakes make a weird groaning sound when you're creeping along slowly, just using the brake to keep your speed down. that all about? Why do they do that? Can someone explain in the comments? I, I've never known. This roof mounted rear middle seat belt is a bit of a pain. Not only for the poor bugger who sat next to you there because it kind of cuts across the head a little bit, but also for the driver because once you've got it plugged in and located it gets in the view of the rear view mirror which is already impeded by the fact that you've got a middle passenger sat here in the first place. Kia offers a Sportage with adaptive suspension in Europe but not in the UK for some reason. And that could be a bit of a problem as I'll explain when I drive the thing. The tank capacity for the Sportage isn't brilliant. In fact, it's lower than many of its key competitors. For instance, for this particular car I've got here, the maximum it can tow is just over 1.6 tonnes. And the biggest towing capacity of any Sportage is 1.9 tonnes. Compare that to a Ford Cougar, which maximum towing capacity is 2.1 tonnes, and a Volkswagen Tiguan, which can tow up to 2.5 tonnes. It's not going to be ideal if you're into towing caravans or horse boxes or mm, some other stuff. The rear view camera is located relatively low to the ground and it's quite exposed. And that means that it gets covered in road grime quite easily. And what happens is you go to reverse, you realise it's covered in road grime. And because this car isn't fitted with like a wash dry feature for the rear view camera, like some other SUVs, you have to get out your car, give it a wipe with your finger and then have another go. 
but that does bring on to five cool things about the Kia Sportage. The definition from that reversing camera is very high quality. Look, we can see a member of the Comair team just texting his mates there. Anyway, this is the top specification car, so it actually has 360 degree view camera. Look, so you get a bird's eye view. In fact, there's other views as well, so you can look at the rear of the car, so you can park it into tight spaces without hitting something. And you get that kind of view that you get on the German executive cars, like Audi's, BMWs and Mercedes, that where you can pretend you're in a computer game. But the Sportage can go better than them because it has blind spot camera views, look. So if I turn left, in my speedo, it'll show what's in the left side blind spot. And if I turn right, in the rev counter, we get the right side blind spot image. That is very clever. High specification hybrid versions of the Sportage come with a remote control parking function where you can actually make them drive in and out of a tight parking space just using the key fob. So look at this. Go on, move, move, that's it, move. But what happens if you think it's gonna crash into something? Can I drive it into this post? This would be very awkward if it does crash. Don't crash, please don't. Ah, thank God it didn't, look. There we go, it's fine. If you're the kind of person that likes to take their family SUV actually off-roading, you're very unusual. However, Kia, has something for you. It's the terrain driving mode where you can choose between snow, mud, or sand. Let's be honest though, you're never gonna press that button, are you? Hybrid versions of the Sportage have something called e-handling mode, where they employ the actual regen effect of the motor when you're going into a turn to like cause added engine braking to get the nose in and turning. Also, it helps when putting the pad down, getting out of the bend as well. It's kind of like a diff, though it's not really one. Anyway. You can rest assured if you buy a Kia Sportage because you've got a seven year warranty. So if something goes wrong, they should fix it for you within that period. Though, of course, willful damage will not be covered. So if you start using the armrest as a leg rest, yeah, don't think that Kia will pay to have it fixed. Before we hit the road, let me talk you through the engine choices. So you can get a 1.6 litre diesel with either 115 or 136 horsepower. It's front wheel drive and you can get it with a six speed manual or a seven speed automatic. Then there's a 1.6 litre turbo petrol with 150 horsepower. And it's also front wheel drive and available manual or automatic. Then there's two hybrids. First is this one, the self-charging hybrid. So that has the same 1.6 litre turbo petrol engine as a normal petrol car, but because you've got an electric motor to boost the power, it has 229 horsepower. Then there's a plug-in hybrid, which has a bigger battery pack, so you can drive up to 30 miles on electric power alone. Also, it's got more power, 265 horsepower. Now, both hybrids are automatic only, and they have all-wheel drive. Are you confused? Well, do you know what? I'm going to go onto the CarWag website and I'm going to configure my ideal Kia Sportage, my favourite engine and my favourite trim. Now, if you want to see what that car is and the saving you can get on it through CarWag, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. Right, let's see what this Kia Sportage is like to drive. Starting off with in town. What was this? Wrong way, please turn around. No, no, I'm going the right way. What's, what's the matter with you? Being a hybrid, it will drive at speeds of almost 40 miles an hour on electric power alone. And when you're just pootling around, it's quite good. It's quiet, relaxing. Though if you need to suddenly accelerate, the petrol motor does suddenly kick in, give you that boost of acceleration. And there is a momentary pause while it's thinking about doing that before it takes off. It's not bad though. It's pretty much like in any other hybrid system. I can tell you that the steering is nice and light. Now the suspension though, it's a bit firmer than you'd expect for this kind of vehicle. It's okay over speed humps like that, but when you get to driving over potholes, you do feel them a little bit more than you would do in other SUVs, such as a Volkswagen Tiguan. That seems to be a bit smoother over bumps. It's kind of just spoils the experience slightly. What doesn't spoil the experience are the brakes. So they're nice and progressive. Sometimes with hybrids, as you transition from the regen braking to the actual friction brakes, they can feel a bit grabby. Not with this, it's smooth. The only thing I have noticed though is that if I brake and then lift off, you can still feel a bit of regen happening once you've lifted off and it doesn't quite coast as much as you might like. Anyway, let's talk about the maneuverability. Let's see if I can go around this mini roundabout in one go. The turning circle is supposed to be 11 meters, which is about average for this type of car. Will it get round without curbing the alloys? Oh, joy, a wincing moment there, but it did it. 
So it's maneuverable enough for in town. And other things to note is when you are driving in town, obviously the raised driving position gives you a good view out. And the dash is quite low, so you really do see the end of the bonnet, which is good. There are thick side pillars, but you get these extra little glass areas here, which do mean that the blind spot isn't too bad. The door mirrors are nice and large, which is great for parking and making sure you don't curb when parking. And if you have the back window, that's not so good. It's quite small, the back window. Right, now let's try the Sportage on some faster roads, pulling out of a junction, foot down. Picks up pretty well. Oh, the engine does make a sound. It didn't like that. A bit complainy. Now, once you're up to speed and you back off, it's quiet. So I'm gonna go around this roundabout twice. See what the handling is like. So the firm suspension should pay off here. It should stop the car leaning so much in the bends. So maybe it can live up to its Sportage E name. I mean, it's not like a sports car, you know, it's an SUV, but it seems to grip well. It doesn't roll about too much. It's quite confidence inspiring. Although the steering, uh, it just has no feel through it. So you don't really know how much grip you've got on your front wheels. Now I can put the car into sports mode and now the throttle response is a bit more responsive and the steering feels heavier, but it doesn't feel any more natural. It's still very much like a computer game. Now, as you're going at a faster speed, you do notice a little bit of wind noise from here, though there's not much road noise, which is good. And overall, it's quite enough, this car. It's about average, really. I tell you what I'm quite impressed with, the gear changes. They're good, smooth, and fairly quick. Here's another roundabout. It gives me the chance to check out the handling again. Way. It's as good as you need a car like this to be, it really is. And the four-wheel drive means you've got plenty of traction when you're accelerating out of bends. Though I probably should slow down again now. No, speaking of which, there is one last thing for me to do. This particular Kia Sportage is supposed to do 0 to 60 in eight seconds dead. But does it really? Let's find out with my specialist timing gear. I'm gonna launch it. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Bit of noise when you rev it out of this engine. Oh, it's going. There we are. Ooh, 7.62. It's not bad, really. So then what's my final verdict on the Kia Sportage? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Sportage. It's a good all-round family SUV. I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think about the Sportage in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and click on that box there to get a car wow to sell your car.